Holly, welcome to the uh, Just Get Started podcast. Thanks for joining today. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm I'm so excited. I uh, you know I have a few friends that are artists. I've, I I know about the most minimal amount to say that I know about art, but I know a little bit. So I'm so excited to know that just your background's incredible and what you're doing now with this um, this flag exhibit. I, I thought it was so cool. And I was like, all right, I got to talk to you about this. I got to I got to figure out how this started. How'd you get you know into this realm? Um, so maybe if you can share up front, and I want to make sure I get this right. The current exhibit you have, and you go a little deeper in this, but did I read that there's like over a hundred different like flag designs you have, and then you have this massive like big piece. Um, can you just share maybe 30, 60 seconds on the current exhibit, and then we'll go down that path? Yes, I do have a hundred flags total, and the largest one is the Unity flag. It's the flagship, no pun intended, to the whole and entire show, um, and that that started. First, I, the reason why I chose 100 was because I think there's at least 100 stories in our history. So each flag represents a little taste of history. Mm. It could be a little fun and, and some of it's serious because I'm, I'm serious about what I'm doing and, and the flag is a serious thing. Um, it's kind of the bedrock of, of our nation. So not to sound <laughs> like I'm on a soapbox, but I really do believe that. Um, it started a while ago. I did a few flags in 2013 and I really enjoyed it, but I didn't want to start something that would kind of put me in a box, uh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so I kept doing other things. Uh, and in 2019, I was at Art Basel before the pandemic happened and I was invited there to paint live with um, about 2,500 onlookers. So that was fun. It was um, at the um, former Rebel Museum in Miami, which is really, I mean, if you know this place, it's pretty dope. So um, I did this painting and it, the size and the color, the background of it, it just lent itself to be to becoming a flag. Um, after days of looking at it, I decided that I wanted to make a flag. So I did. Moving forward, um, I was living in Europe at the time. I came back. Um, right when the pandemic happened, it hit us and um, pretty hard. And um, I couldn't go back to Europe, of course. Uh, I stayed here and I, I was kind of perplexed. What do I do? What do I do? Yeah. And so I ended up outside of Aspen, Colorado. I wanted to go somewhere where there was some inspiration, some nature that I didn't have to have this mask on all the time and I could work outside. So I went there. Um, fast forward opened a gallery, I decided, hey, I'm not traveling for work. I'm not I'm no longer able to travel. What am I doing? Let's let's get to meet the people here. So that's what I did. Um, and how do you can I can I pause you for a second? How do you just open a gallery? Like do you just get a piece <laughs> of property or lease out something or go on the street? Like how do you how do you do that? How does that work? I know. I asked myself the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> I've never had a gallery. I'm like, I'm honestly like um, a gypsy. I've, I'm traveling all over the world. I never have really a home for that long. Okay. Uh, how do I get a, a property? I don't even know if my credit's good enough. <laughs> 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 so I just started talking to a couple of uh, new friends and one of them was connected to a broker. And they're like, yeah, let's just do this. We had no lease, just come in and open up a gallery. And I'm like, what? Okay, let's do it. So I did, I thought it was, you know, maybe going to last a minute, but it ended up lasting six months. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it was just a friend of a friend that and had a lot of property. And, and so this gallery that you set up, was this kind of the catalyst to going kind of on this whole tour then? that was, So were all the different flags that you uh, created in that gallery or there other types of artwork? No, or? there was nothing created in that gallery. The gallery was a formal marble showroom. So okay. it was, not somewhere Hallie Hart should be hanging out, like to paint anyway, because I'm a messy girl. I paint with my hands, so it would have been uh, disastrous to say the least. But um, no, but I was doing a show. I, I didn't have any of my art from New York or, or France or, or London or anywhere that I was located. And um, so I had to create a new body of work. So I found a studio and I started kicking butt and and then what happened, which was really amazing, was I was 
speaking to one of my art installers and he said, you know, you asked me to take a few paintings of yours from Miami. Well, I have one rolled up and it's quite large. What is this? And I said, oh my, that must be my flag. Hmm. You know, it was just like mind bending. I'm like, this is it. This is the time. I'm like, can you bring it? And I, we unrolled it and lo and behold, there was this giant, massive piece of art in my gallery. Yeah. And I'm, it was like, this was kind of amazing. I am, at that point, we decided that this needed to go up. And then there's another story behind that. Um, I had been in the gallery and um, a, a man came in. We were chatting for about three hours about the country and what was going on and mm -hmm. the flag that was hung. And it just started stirring emotions at that point. Um, that's where it all, it, the baby was born. We, we discussed it and I said, I, I think I need to do flags. And, and it was kind of an epiphany, like an aha moment. Mm -hmm. It's because of this person I was speaking with for you know hours at a time. And then he just kept coming back and eventually he became my partner. <laughs> So that unfolded. So it was all kind of very romantic in it, in itself as, as a whole for the, for the project. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I was intrigued and I, and maybe the, what you're talking about in Miami and, and kind of doing that flag, I think maybe I saw a video of this online, but like I, I was intrigued because yeah, you're, you're painting with, do you do that for all your art is just your hands? Yes. They're messy. Yeah. So I, <laughs> Listen, I grew up, I grew up probably like most folks, you know, I'm 38. So I grew up probably like most folks my age where you watch Bob Ross on TV, you know, on PBS or whatever. And, and, and he was, you know, he was painting with, with a paintbrush. And, and that's that what I thought art guy? was. What's that? Is that the paint by number guy? No, he was the one, oh, Bob Ross was that he was the guy like on PBS that used to have like the I can't even do his voice. He had a very soft spoken voice. Oh, we're going to draw some trees over. Anyways, um, the reason I bring him up is like, you know, you think growing up like, oh, I need a paintbrush or that's really what art is. How did you discover this type of art, this creation with your hands? What was that genesis process? When did you come across that? Were you a lot younger or was this just more recent? No, no, this was, this was at least 10, 12, 12 years ago, possibly. Okay. I, years kind of blend together. Um, I was using a brush for a little while and then I started throwing paint off the brush. Uh, you know, I, I watched Jackson Pollock paint many times. It didn't work for me, sticks and brushes. It just made a big mess. So at one point um, I didn't have enough control with, with the brush. I felt like I just kind of dug in and got my hands in it wet and, and started playing with that, even smearing and painting, kind of just exploring that whole thing and it, it didn't work for a long time I just but I kept going back because it felt so good mm. it felt so good to get like messy and wet and you know kind of really feel it and, and then it, it just hit me like flickering and throwing each finger served a purpose each one was like a brush every one of them worked differently um, and just flicking of the wrist I realized that that was different and throwing forward and up and all these different things that was like almost like a conductor, you know? Hmm. So it, that's how it happened. It probably took me a good year to figure it out. But then after that, I mean, like I can pretty much control everything that I do. Wow. It's kind of wild. I know. It's yeah. a little well, it's interesting, but, but I think that's what's, you know, makes humans unique. There's so many different ways to do things, you know, like, again, you could put the art umbrella but that means a million different things, right? And that's what's really cool about it. When did you uh, like? I like your shirt, by the way. What's that? I like your shirt, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, so that's the flag here. Yeah, that's flag? this is uh, yeah, this is my, my uh, sister in law uh, started the American Pitbull Foundation in Charlotte. Oh, great! Yep, and they uh, they train uh, service dogs for veterans with PTSD. So. Yeah, it's a cool, oh, it's a cool nonprofit. So I always like to support and wear the, wear the shirt. So shout, shout out, shout out to Sarah. Um, where did this all start for you? Like the, the first idea you can remember of being creative, because you do a lot of stuff, you do creative writing, you do film, you know, filmmaking, and we'll get into some of that. But like, when did the, that creative energy, do you remember that as a kid when that started flowing? I mean, from the moment 
I could speak, it was all about art. My grandmother was a painter. I was around artists. You know, of course, there was that wonderful teacher from when I was just a wee little thing. I don't even think he was a teacher. I think he was like a nanny or something. Or babies. <laughs> Not a nanny. That made me sound pretentious. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, um, yes, my it started really, really. Young. I was probably about four or five years old when I started painting. I think that some of my paintings that my mother has are, are quite good. They're abstract, of course. I did bodies, you know, faces, all kinds of things from the, from the age of five up. So I've always been creative. And as far as making movies or, you know, I always wanted to be a movie star. So we were always filming and I was always doing acts and writing plays, you know, the hairless skinny cat attacks Manhattan. That was something I did. <laughs> So I was always creating something, you know, it was like a little clown walking around, like I can do this and I can do that. And, you know, so and, did, you know, you, much. did you have a good support system then at home that kind of encouraged that and let you get out and, and be who you were? Yeah, my, my mother and my grandmother, the women in my family were very, very strong and, and supportive, but they still allowed me to be a woman. You know, they realized that, you know, at that time, I'm a little bit older than you are. So it was like a man's world. So you got to kind of tiptoe a little bit, but you can work your way through that with okay. your charm and your smarts and you got this and you got that. So let's you know, do it all. So yeah, they were there supporting the system. Hmm. Um, although the education was really important, you can't just run off and be a painter in Paris like I wanted to be at 17, you know? So go to school, make sure you go to a good school. After you graduate, do whatever you want but you're graduating, so. Yeah, I, I was actually curious to ask about that because you went for English literature, right? I did. I, if, if I My read mother it. did as well, so we have a lot of that. Well, so tell me about the, and maybe whether it's a struggle in your mind, because because whether it's going from high school to college or making those decisions, I mean, folks that are our age or younger, it doesn't matter, they're making those decisions every day of like when to make the shift or when to kind of go after something. You wanted to go to Paris, you said you're 17. Of course. And I'm then you go to then you go to college for many years. Like, was that was that a struggle for you? Or did you actually really enjoy going to college and that experience? Or were you always in the back of your mind, like, I gotta get to Paris, I gotta get to Paris. Like, <laughs> you know, like what was going through your mind at that time? That little devil on their shoulder, yes. Um, but I enjoyed it, of course. Um I, I listened, I was a pretty good girl, so. You know, if they said, do it. I said, okay, let's do it. Let's get it out of the way kind of thing, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it well. So I did exceed it in that. And, but I was always waiting, definitely yeah. waiting. I don't think after I graduated, I ever had a real job per se, like where I had to clock in and, and answer. I decided that from that moment, I do whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. And I had, you know, and I was intelligent enough to do it. So I just kind of rolled out. Well, how I did you get off. as soon as graduation happened? I did take off for for at least I think it was 12 months travel. So how did you know what to do at that time? Because that was I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, were, did you go to Paris or wherever you traveled? Like, did you have a job? Did you have someone you were going to mentor under? Like, how were you just like, I don't know, I'm just packing up and moving <laughs> like. Well, I started taking photographs. I didn't even know anything about photography. And oh. so I had my little dark room in New York and I did little parties and bar mitzvahs and mm. weddings and anything fun. I thought it was fun, you know? I did models, even though I was modeling and I just made a little bit of money here and there. And um, I was a DJ. I just picked up odd things. Like I wanted to just do things that gave me freedom to discover the art world in whatever what capacity I was going to be in it. So I kind of, yeah, that's how I rolled it. I wrote for people. I, I wrote scripts, um, anything, anything that I didn't have to conform to a, a nine to five grind. Yeah. Was there a breakthrough moment you remember that kind of I propelled think there you? There was a breakthrough or? moment in Hell's Kitchen. I was living in Hell's Kitchen and this duplex um, and I was painting out of my teeny tiny uh, kitchen slash living room mm. but then I had friends that were artists 
um, some of them are doing really great things too, but we were, I, I love that art community that everyone's really supportive. They would pop over, we'd have our wine or whatever, we'd talk about art. And at that moment, they were all like, you're on to something, you're doing something really special here. Like we can see it, you've, you've transformed from this to that. And I, cause I, what I started doing was painting large photographs I would go to De Gaulle, they were still around back then. I would have them blow up these large images and I painted them. I would scratch out the, the first three layers with all kinds of um, uh, knives and things to start building these faces. And then I decided to start painting them. And that's when things started to change. The paint hit the, the, the film photography. And that's when and it was, it actually was, uh, we, there was no digital at that point. So yeah. what you got was what you got. And it was true art. And so these large, huge, you know, six foot faces that I was painting uh, were beautiful. And they're like, you're onto something. So then I had that kind of moment where I said, I think I'm going to transition into painting, just painting mm -hmm. full time. And that's what How was the... Um you know, because we can talk through, you know, sometimes in the podcast, even though we go longer form than a five minute talk, we still, you know, there's, you're still skipping through, right. Of like the day and grind of like, I'm working in the studio there and I'm going through, you know, <laughs> like how did the, can you share a little bit about your mindset there? Like you said, Hey, I had some really good supportive friends that said, Hey, you're, this is going somewhere. Did you believe that yourself? Oh yeah. I always knew it. You, okay. from, from day one, from when I was five years old, there was just something in me that just said, you got this, this is exactly what you're doing, what you're, mm -hmm. what you're going to do. I always had that, that drive, that, that gut feeling, that intuition, it just pulls at me and it still does right now. It's pulling at me for this national exhibition. Yeah, I'm scared half the time because I'm like, you know, I'm putting a lot into this tour, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I, but it's still something that just, it's there, you can't ignore it. And I think everyone has it honestly in them. They just need to pay attention. Yeah. It's like o Oprah says, I, I listen to Oprah a lot. She's a very inspirational lady. And she was talking about, you know, listen to the whispers. The whispers will always take you where you need to go. Yeah. And that's, the whisper is you. It's you and your drive, your feeling. You know, if you're doing something worthwhile and it's beautiful, and you're giving back, then, then, then that's where you need to go. Yeah. Have you ever done like the exhibition you're doing right now? Have you ever done anything like that? Like this country tour around or? No, I mean, other than just traveling because I, you know, had galleries all over the world. Um, Opera Gallery had me in 12 countries so I could go to those 12. And also I just had no fear. I'd go wherever I want to go and paint, but no, nothing like this, nothing, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's truly a mission. It's, it's kind of crazy. Well, like how do you, so how do you set up a tour like this? Like, are you, are you contacting certain areas? Like, Oh, I want to go to Phoenix. Let me contact some folks here. Or did you get some initial response? Like, Hey, this would be cool. Do you want to come here? How, how did that all work to get this set up? Yeah. I just started with a map basically. <laughs> and a, couple okay. of things. <laughs> a really good team. Um, my partner, Jason Allen, he was, he was pivotal and all that. And then, you know, of course I hired the best people, researcher, publicist, everyone, you know, we even have a documentary film team. So we're like, we want to just, I mean, honestly, here's how it all started. We, we, we threw a couple uh, fishing lines out to see what we could catch. And quite honestly, we, we, we didn't think that it sounded as good for other people to hear it as we, we felt about it because we're so yeah. passionate right but we had the response from like this beautiful hotel uh chain um the kimpton hotel and they were mm -hmm. really enthusiastic they felt that it had so much value and that they were connected to that you know the feel that we had going with the uh, you know american flag meaning more than this and it wasn't a political thing for anyone in this company. It was more, I, I shouldn't speak for them. I'll speak for myself. It's not a political thing. It's more of a foundation thing. So we, we, we hit it off and it just happened organically like that. And, and they were humans, you know, they were people that I could speak with. Yeah. It wasn't like, it wasn't this large company that you see 
all over the world and they're all over, you know, London, including the United States, um, they're all over. And um, there were people involved that were, that really cared. So that's how it all happened. And then, you know, you realize that that really works and it really, it, it, um, it transcends, you know? So it, it just happened like that, honestly. So how and, long? Uh, yeah. Well, how long? Sorry, go, go finish your thought there. I was uh, I was going to so jump in with another. Thinking like hey, we were just mapping it out because we didn't want to just see cities, Brian. We wanted to go to towns. Yeah. So I'm not just going to big cities. I'm going to big cities because we need to speak to people like you to get this word out, so we can continue this journey. Yeah. Um, and, and get people involved in, and kind of pat, pay it forward. Get people to 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 get out on board with this whole program that you know we want. To pay for we want to pass it on we want everyone to get involved in it it's mm -hmm. a mission now but also we want we wanted to be able to go to all the smaller towns you know where which are get forgotten because maybe they don't have any uh, industry there or something you know but there are people there that care just as much as everywhere else and they have a vote and all of that so and they have a say in all of it so i've decided that like, not just to go to cities but to go to towns and visit people and see what the American flag means to the whole country, not just a city. They don't speak for everyone. How long does this go on for? Too far there. Did, I go, did well, I go too far left? No, that's perfect. How how long does the the tour go for? What's the anticipation? No however, end. however it goes. There's no end game. Actually, okay. I mean the country's huge. That's I mean, true. I lived in Europe for, for seven years and like each state represents like almost the size of a country. Yeah? yeah. So, I mean, this could go on and on and on. Um, I don't know. We have about six months planned out already mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people interested in doing another six months. So, yeah. Now, do you, do you go on the tour? Like, are you there that like, will you be in Phoenix the entire time? Mm -hmm. and because be I'm hearing a lot here. I'm speaking. I'm okay. speaking to different people. I'm okay. In interviews, but I'm also uh, planning our next trip. I mean, it's I have an office with me, <laughs> so yeah. yes, I like to be present. I don't. I'm not. You know, I'm not some diva. I'm. A, I'm an artist that's trying to do something good. So of course, I I want to work with the Kimpton Hotel and do some special events with them. Um, all the arts and culture people here who are donating flags to different cities. Okay, you know, cool. Uh, so yeah, so I'm involved and also with charities like like you and your sister. Um, I'm really close to the the veterans and, and they're really important. So um, yeah, yeah, that's, so, yeah, that's yeah, phenomenal. A lot of them coming tomorrow or today, actually, I'm painting live here at the hotel. Wow. Are so, you getting over to the Carolinas at all? And, oh, yeah. Well, actually, we're talking to them right now. Oh, nice. We're talking to North Carolina. Yeah, that's where I, yeah, that's where I'm at, just outside Raleigh. Oh, you are? Yep, yeah, yep, just I outside. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I cool. You were in New York for some reason. I'm I'm from New York. I, that's that's okay. my, that's where I'm originally. Maybe it's the, okay. the okay. neutral accent I have that gave it away. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. If you ever get over the if you get over the Carolinas here, that'd be uh, that'd be cool oh, to see where you're headed. Yeah. Actually, we're speaking with some people right now, so awesome. I hope to do that. Yeah, that's great. What so obviously the the production quote unquote you're doing the art you're creating is is fun how do you juggle the other side of it the actual business side to all of this stuff like do you do all that you seem like you have a team of folks that help out like how do you juggle that because that's part of this process oh we do we have a team but i'm kind of a little bit of a control freak so i have to overlook everything <laughs> You know, I have to oversee everything and it's really hard. Actually, it's a hard thing for an artist. I mean, I just don't operate like that. Yeah. So I have to train myself to do all of that. You know, you heard the job situation. <laughs> so you can imagine all the emails. I'm looking over everything and it's, yeah. it's hard to juggle. But the team that's that's on board right now is really good. Yeah. It's good. And um, everyone plays a part and you don't have to follow behind and no one follows behind. Well, everyone follows behind me. Yes, they do. But um, it's a team. It's a team effort, but everyone has a passion for what we're doing. So yeah. any advice on the from the business side? And, and it could be for anyone, but maybe even someone that's in the art field and, and maybe is exploring that as a, as a kind of a path for them. Anything you would share that you've learned in your time? I would say just surround yourself with really great artists. 
they'll help you through the process. You can't do anything alone. I've always been around other artists in, in communities like that. I worked at a Manic Contemporary in New Jersey with 150 artists around me. I've never lost track and, or sight of all of them. And they help on a daily basis with conversations and aspirations, inspirations. So definitely surround yourself with artists and sometimes better than yourself. And yeah, uh, yeah most of the time. And um, I say always like really have a good solid team, you know, for whatever you're doing. You've got to have friends and, and family that back you and and guide you a little bit. Yeah. You know really like, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, as I say, you know what's so interesting too is and a lot of folks I talk on this podcast, it's rare they're doing just one thing. Now sometimes that's good to focus, right? But yeah. you're also doing, I wanted to chat briefly because I, I I think it's really cool what you're doing with this documentary and, and the filmmaking and stuff. How did you mentioned, obviously, you have some of that maybe from your childhood, you kind of enjoyed that. But when did deciding to do a documentary and doing all this stuff, when did that originate? When did that idea come about? How, how did you get started with that? Well, I did it short a few years ago. Um, again, I was surrounding myself with all these great artists at Manning Contemporary. And one of them was, was, um, was a mentor, an older man, really amazing artist. Um, and um uh, Michael Gitlin, Fragments, it's called Fragments uh, by of my, Michael Gitlin, um, great artist. And we were uh, chatting one day and I was talking about my process and how music was my boyfriend and I need music to, to work. It, it's as loud as it can get. I can blow the house apart, you know. Yeah. It has to be loud. It could be Bach, it could be, you know, Miles Davis, it could be Beyonce. I mean, just throwing it out there. It, it, and that drives how the art turns out. So if I'm listening to something really dark like Bjork, this painting could end up representing that. And so we had this conversation and, and at that moment I decided that, hey, you know, here's a light bulb in Halle. I'm going to do um, a documentary about music in the brain. Hmm. So we started chatting. Didn't turn out like that. We had, I ended up making a short because I wanted to stay here instead of trying to do something bigger than myself. And it turned out really beautiful. It was a documentary about him. We did talk about music um, and philosophy, and it's, it's gorgeous if anyone wants to see it. But um, at that moment, I really got the bug though. And so when we started doing this, um, um, I was started, when I was an Aspen, I got with a film team and I was going to do extreme sites where I would do like extreme painting, like on mountaintops and, and, mm. and we were gonna film it with drones and things like that. And then I'm like, that's not really something I want to do. You know, I'm like, that's kind of crazy. It's like X Games, you know, meets painting. Right. So when the flags appeared, I knew that that was the moment we need to have people involved. And I had been filming with Netflix in when I lived in Monte Carlo, which was a few years ago, um, on a show. And it never, it never surfaced. It never made it. But we we filmed for a long time, and I made a connection with a really amazing producer. And so I I sent something out to him. He's like, if you ever do anything let me know because I want you, you're amazing on camera. So I was like, okay, what? So we got together and he's like, this sounds, I'll say it like he does, this sounds bloody good. So we did, we got yeah. on board and he's in love with it. He loves the idea of, you know, doing the country and and any of these small, you know, rural areas. And yeah. so we're gonna dig into it, get dirty, so to speak. That's how it all kind of how do you um do you like storyboard the start to finish of like here's how we think the documentary goes or is it kind of made i, I have no idea so i'm kind of curious because i watch a lot of documentaries i'm always curious like how do they they seem like they flow so nicely like how do you come up with those definitely ideas storyboard definitely i recommend whiteboards <laughs> yeah. and, a, and a camera but um that's how it works um, and, and also in books, I've written a couple of books, but books like the same thing, start from the start, try to see a middle and an end and try to kind of fill it in what you see for the story from here to here and here to here. How, what is it you want to see at the end as well? So you, you kind of build this thing up. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm working with Jason now. And he's um, doing the documentary uh, book. So he's doing this journalistic side. So I have the journalistic side with the film and the book going on simultaneously. So I'm involved in all aspects of it, but I said, yeah, that's how you should do it. You should really see 
build your vision first on what what is it exactly you you want people to see what is it you know why would they be interested in this you know and show them why hmm. and yeah i usually say my story has to end with we call it save the cat in the industry and filmmaking and that means i want everyone to walk away feeling good i don't like a movie where someone's killed at the end yeah. and you're like why why did you make me watch that you know yeah. Uh, I, I want people to get a feeling of, of warmth, you know, so I say that with my story, I know where I'm going with it, but we need to fill in the details here. So yeah. we're building the story as we go. Interesting. They're definitely storyboards. Okay. One of, the, one of the notes I had down here, because I was, again, you're pulled in so many directions is how do you balance your time? Like, how do you carve out to speak at the hotel and then maybe who knows maybe you're kind of doing some meet and greets maybe you're doing you're doing this interview like how do you balance that how does your how, how does it kind of a day in the life work for you well you try like one you have to find balance for yourself you have to take the time you have to say no sometimes and you have to meditate i believe a meditation will keep you center you can handle a lot yeah what type of meditation do you do um well, I just meditate with my own kind of music in the morning and uh, I do some chants sometimes, but it's basically something I learned from my partner actually to slow down my brain. Yeah. So um, I don't know if there's, we're more Tibetan kind of theme going on, but um, yeah, it really helps to get up in the morning center and then get started mm -hmm. and also have a good team that has a good schedule going. Yeah, can keep, keep you on point, maybe. Yeah, you can't overload yourself. You know that. You yeah. have to have time to work out, to meditate, to eat right. Um, yeah. You know, sometimes when you get like caught up in this, I mean, I started spinning out. I wasn't eating. I was losing weight. I wasn't walking, exercising, breathing fresh air. So, and you know, if you don't have that, you'll just, the whole thing will fall apart. So you really just have to make time for yourself. Were you just overworked then? Is overworked, that like, yes, like. We have, my house was a studio. My studio was a studio. My dining room wasn't a dining room. It was an office. And yeah, so it got a little out of hand. At one point I was breaking mm -hmm. down a little bit. The health was deteriorating, so. How did you catch yourself? How did you find that? how did you figure People, that out? People cared about me enough to say, you know, you need to eat, you need to take this, you need to go see a doctor. And yeah. so that's what I did. And now I'm back on track, so. Yeah, that's awesome. You, I can only imagine. I mean, you can really get carried away with this. And caring about people more than yourself is great, but at what expense, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, so I, I want to get get you out of here. Um, I know you got a lot going on over there, but let me ask this here. And I always like to go back to. So you could go as young as you want. You can go back to that seventeen year old wanting to go to Paris, or you're younger, but. If you were to go back and share, whether it's a quote, a piece of advice, insight, something to help your younger self start on the journey a little bit better, um, what would you share? Is there anything you've learned in your years that you think would be the most valuable for them? Oh gosh, there's so many things my younger self should have known. Um, Any one that's kind of would be like, wow, this, this, man, this would be so great. I wish I knew this at 17. I would say the biggest thing for me, lessons learned were, were to get to know people and go with that gut feeling because you can really get trapped by, by negative forces. So I would say, go with that gut feeling. If you know something's not right, then you, you probably should run. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I, I think I surrounded myself in being in New York City, I grew up there. So you can fall into a lot of traps. Uh, mean girls and, and all kinds of people that really don't have your best interests at heart. Um, so I would steer clear of those kind of people. And I mean, you can recognize them. I think girls know that, boys know that. But um, but yes, I say stay with a pack that's really positive and, and don't kind of go away from that. Don't stray too far. Yeah. And would you agree kind of, you almost have to recognize who you are? Because I, I fell into this when I was younger was like, needing the attention or like, so I would surround myself with people that maybe weren't good for me, but, but Hey, they wanted me around. So I was like, all right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's hard when you're younger. Yeah. I mean, I did the same thing uh, for a short while, but then I'm like, wait, they want to be around me. doesn't mean I want to be around them. Yeah. Yeah. So if you let yourself shine, 
you'll you'll attract the right people. Yeah. But we, I think, I can see that we both went through that at one point. Yeah. But it's hard. It's hard being young, especially I can't imagine being young now, like seventeen, with the social media and all of that. I mean, that stuff drives me absolutely batshit crazy. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like doing all this, they're like, give me a post, give me a post. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't imagine the pressure of being 17 again and going out there and having everyone judge you like that. It's yeah. gotta be tough. So yeah, I would say get with a really good team, get with a really good crew of friends and stay with it. Um, and they'll, they'll, they'll keep you on the right path. Well, Holly, where can everyone uh, find you? Where's the best place to connect? Maybe it's through social media. Maybe, maybe it's through other ways. Maybe it's through other ways. Your, your call. Come to Phoenix. Get on a plane. Yeah. Um, no, um, social media, House of Heart Art. And um, my last name is H-A-R-T. So it's House of Heart Art and it's everywhere. That's They're all connected. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever is out there. I'm on it. But and, um, Instagram is usually where I put my stories and stuff because that's the one I like, I guess. And, and for these in the tour, how, like, how often do you think you'll update new dates of the tour? Oh, the website come? will be updated every week on the dates. So right now the dates are the first, the next three dates are on there. Okay. Um, and we're going to start getting a little bit tighter there. So each city will have the events that are there as well. Mm. So nice learning curve. Yes. But it's, it's updated often on my website, which is houseofheart.com. Awesome. And yes, I hope everyone follows us and hashtags us on their flag. So I, I'm trying to get everyone to get involved in a hashtag, which is um, US flag unity. Uh, whenever they take a photograph in front of a, a flag or see a flag, shoot it and, and hashtag us because we want everyone to kind of start the movement with us and be involved and watch the journey. And, you know, again, go back on the website. I'll be posting videos coming up very soon because we just did some and keep everyone in the loop. It'll be fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for joining. This was phenomenal. I was glad to get to know you a little bit more and uh, good luck on thank the rest you. of your tour. I was a little nervous to tell you the truth, but thank you.